In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. Holy God, mighty God, immortal God, we're in tumultuous times, but your word is going to sail through our hearts and get us through to our journey to be home with you. Because we are going into the eternal mind of God, and you have purposed for us to be here tonight to hear this word that we'll never worry again. And so, Father, I just have to lift up the hearts so that they can understand and believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Glory to Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we're going to give you a course on never worrying again. How many want to hear this? I can't wait to hear it myself. <laughs> Now, if you go with me to Luke chapter 12, please, and we're going to do the, we're going to do verse 13, and then we're going to go into no more worry. Amen? Turn to the person next to you, you need to hear this. Okay, now, worry is a sin. But guess what you probably failed to do in your life? Confess it. You probably failed to confess it. Now I'm going to tell you how to overcome, and we're going to give you the words of Jesus. So, does he mean what he says and says what he means? Yes. So, if he says stop worrying, what are you going to do? Stop worrying. In Italian, we say stop the Jeep. I don't know why we Italians always want the Jeep to stop. <laughs> Amen. Why do Italians want the Jeep to stop? Now, the parable of the rich fool. One of the multitudes said to him, now, remember multitudes don't what? Follow Jesus. Multitudes don't follow God. In one sense, I'm grateful for the hour we live in. In one sense, we're going to find out who really believes right now. Did I want to see this day happen? I told you, I wanted to be in heaven 100 years before this day ever came. You're going to find out, left, right, front, and center, who really believes in God. You're going to be talking about it every single day. In fact, somebody just said, on September 8th, the Antichrist says he's going to reveal himself to the world. So, I mean, right now we're going at a lightning speed of darkness. So that's why I'm begging us to stick together. Amen. Amen? Amen. And by the way, do you know how many times I've said this in the past? Hundreds. 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 You heard me say it. One of the multitudes said, Teacher, bid my brother divide the inheritance with me. Now, when you get an inheritance, it means somebody has what? Died. Died. Now, notice that he calls Jesus here Didaskos. That's teacher. So notice the approach is Jesus on teaching well. So just by the fact that he just called Jesus Didasco, everybody say Didasco. Didasco. That means Jesus has to give a what? A teacher. If you, how, this is how this man knew Jesus. He knew him by being called teach. And so that means you gotta teach me something. But is he, do you think he's concerned about a teaching? or he wants his money. How many ever read, met a person that's been so involved in money? Money. Money makes the world go around, the world go around. I've been rich, and I've been poor, and I like rich a whole lot more. <laughs> Amen? So, here we have someone, Didasco, but yet he doesn't want the teaching, he wants the what? Money. money. But he said to them, man, who made me a judge or divider over you? Jesus, John 3, 17, Jesus doesn't judge you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whoever believes in him should not perish but have <laughs> everlasting life. Now everybody's going to live forever. Some are going to have eternal life, and someone's going to have everlasting life. Anybody confused yet? Everybody's going to live forever. 
Some will have eternal life, and some will have everlasting life. Which one do you want? Everlasting. It's everlasting life. Eternal life is that we're all going to live forever. Everlasting life is uh, we can forever live in the life that God has for us. You see the difference? Amen? Amen. So if, if I'm preaching your funeral, say, oh, they're into eternal life. Of course they are. And what did, what did you hear when I said they went into eternal life? They're in heaven. They're in heaven. Yeah. I didn't say that. Yeah. I said they're in eternal life. No. If I said they're in everlasting life, it means they're in heaven. Do you see the difference? Yes. How many ever heard those two terms before? We heard them, I thought they were synonymous. They are not synonymous. Now, so we see here, now notice what Jesus says here. Here's the Greek word. Ho. If I say ho. Ho. Athropos. Ho anthropos. Ho anthropos. Man. The man. Ho anthropos. I can say ho anthropos. Ho anthropos. So Jesus now is staring at humanity in our basic, basic screaming out, this is what I want. So how many would say, if someone says to you, now, did you notice on the street, the guys say, hey man, hey man. Notice the women never say, hey woman. <laughs> did you notice that? <laughs> how many ever heard the guys say, hey man? Yeah. Let's go, man. You never heard that before? <laughs> Did you ever hear Primo? All right. Now, what does it mean to say, hey man? It means I'm looking at you at your base. Now, this is a scary term because we all have, have one thing a part of us. So what is Jesus saying? Adam, in your brokenness, Adam, in your sinfulness, <laughs> anthropos. Now, what do they want? Money makes the world go around, the world go around. You got it? And then Jesus turns and says, <laughs> anthropos. But of course, he spoke in Hebrew. Ben Adama. Then will be the son of Adam. Adam always coming from the ground. Remember? But here in the Greek it's Holanthropos. Now, what you're going to see, how many have ever seen in your family, in your friends, and definitely where you worked? How many ever saw with people, at least once in your illustrious lives, the ugly side of humanity show up? Anybody ever see the ugly side of humanity at least once? So what would you say? I know what you're going to say. I'm going to say this this way. They don't know what I'm at. The ho anthropos. When you look at your husband later on, ho anthropos. And it says, what did you say? I didn't curse at you. I just told you who you are. You're a, you're a ho anthropos. Then he says to us, our blessed Lord Jesus does, who made me this judge. John 3, 17, I'm not a judge. John 5, I didn't come to judge. But ultimately, when I get to Mount Zion, then the judging starts. First. When you stand in front of God, ma'am. Chapter 12. Of Luke, please. We are in verse number 13, 14. Everybody see that? How many get a little scared what Jesus just said? Man. I could hear him saying, Man! You know, when you're in New York, you go, Hey, man. You got Reaper, man. You want a dope, man. When you're out in Colorado, we go, man, you want to you let a reaper, man. 
I just moved out to Colorado where I'm at. Do you see what I got to put up with? Amen. Then he says to us there, I bless the Lord. And he said to him, take heed and beware of all the covetousness of man's life. Now, what does it mean to be covetous? St. Paul in Romans 7 had that problem. Did you know Paul mentions his main sin is covetousness? I hope I win the lottery. I know how to get you to pray for me. I'll give you some. Mm -hmm. Everyone here probably would say you would like a few more dollars in your bank account. And that's the source of your worrying. Because you want to make sure you have enough to meet all of your needs. But Jesus says you want to meet your needs, give what you have away. No. I had an M&M attack. I'm only four. Five, six, seven. And I'm hearing the good news of God. And then people start telling me to be generous. I don't want to give anybody my M&M. <laughs> Bless me, church, for I have sinned. Amen? How many here freeze up a little bit when somebody asks you for something? Just a little bit. Anybody go through that? Just like... She'll say, Antoinette, I need 500 American pesos from you. <laughs> Nobody freezes up? Oh, yeah. Yes. Do you, ma'am? Oh, yes. Does it when they ask me to pay their rent. <laughs> okay. Now, what is the source of all of your worry? Ready? Covetousness. Are you getting this? Yes. Now, covetousness means I want it. Do I need it? No, I, I have a flat screen about this big. But you know what? I want one. <laughs> I have a car. Do you know when I was going through college, I hope you appreciate what I had to do. I had a Fred Flintstone car. <laughs> my battery, my battery with the acid from the, you know, they're in the back seat. The battery ate through the metal, and I'm driving on Route 24, and the battery fell through on Route 24. Oh, you're laughing at my problems, huh? And how many know, at that moment, I was covetous? Because here was my prayer. I said, God, yeah, get me through seminary with this car. It was the last day of seminary, and it got me through. And the battery fell through to Route 24. <laughs> exactly what I asked. I said, I didn't mean it that exactly. <laughs> now, in Romans 7, Paul said, my main sin is I covet. The hardest thing for every one of us is to be alive. Now, think about everything you're worried about. It's things. And guess how we pray for it? Things. Mm. And so we look at God as a candy machine. Do you remember ever getting candy? Oh. B3. <laughs> Get your soda. Right? So what is our problem? Covetous. Now, when you die, you're not going to have anything. Amen? Amen. I'm going to look at you in the box and say, Good luck. <laughs> You're gone. And he said to them, Take heed and beware of all the covetousness, where man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. That's not life. That's hell. There's a bumper sticker, you've seen it. Those who die with the mo most toys win. And adults have more toys than kids. Amen? Mm -hmm. We want more toys. 
We want more things. And, and, and what's the second thing he says there? And he told them a parable. A parable is a story that Jesus used common elements to get his point across. Verse 16, the land, of, the, the land of a rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought to himself, what shall I do for I have nowhere to store my crops? I am so abundant. I have so much, what shall I do with it? Now, you worry because you don't know where to put what you got. May I make a suggestion, and you're not going to do it right away. May I make a suggestion to us to get simple with your life. Very simple. Have a bed, and because it's hot tonight, have an air conditioner. And of course, when you get older, you'll definitely need bathrooms. <laughs> Amen? That's it. That's it. And a kitchen to make me spaghetti meatballs. I mean, <laughs> that's all you need. But why are we worried? Think about it. Please, God, I hope you all have plenty of food for the rest of your life. I hope you're all in great health for the rest of your life. I hope you have great years. Ever. Imagine if we all went home and we just had one room. Maybe your TV, maybe some nice amenities, and that's all we had. Instead of all this... Now, let's prove it to you. How many got upset when one thing in your house was broken? You did? <coughs> I came too close to a curb on Sunday. I ripped my tire. It took me three hours to get a brand new tire today. And I said, look, you want to go to heaven, get the tire on now. <laughs> and, and somehow, I took out ridiculous insurance for tires. Can you imagine? And guess what? I didn't have to pay $231 today. Yes. All right, praise God. Now, you do, ma'am. Watch your tires. I do. I had to. <laughs> okay, now. Things, more things, are going to cause you more problems. Does this make sense? That's why you worry. Amen? So here's what you do. You take John right now, you get a hat on him, and you go on safari for the rest of your life. That's all you have to do. Amen? Let him go to Red Bank and announce the gospel. By the way, when he announces the gospel, fewer people are going to believe it now because of what's happening, yes? Yeah, true. What shall I do for now? I have nowhere to let store my crops. And he said, verse 18, and I said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build big, larger ones, and I will, I will store all my grain and, and my goods. Now underline there, my, 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 my. Now, can I tell you why you worry? You keep saying my. Do you have children? You say my. Do you have children, ma'am? You have a daughter? Say mine. She's not yours. His. Switch gears and say, Melissa belongs to you. Now, here's what the Holy Spirit just told me. Are you getting good stuff now? Stand in your prayer. Even when you go at 2 o'clock in the morning. Stand in your prayer at least a few minutes and say, God, you lead. You do the fighting. Okay? Now, circle the word mice. How many mice are in there? A lot of mice, aren't there? So guess what? Guess what this person is? I'm focused in on the unholy trinity. Me, myself, and I. That's why you worry. There's so, so many things that bother me about this life. One of them is the red tide coming in Florida. I love Florida. Mm. And I like the Gulf Coast. And when I see all that red gook mm. and the turtles coming belly up, I'm like, those poor little turtles. Nobody had a turtle funeral this week. <laughs> Amen. Did you, did you hear the turtles are, are dropping? The birds are falling out. That bothers me. But then I remember what Jesus says, which we're going to get into right now. I take care of the birds in the air. There's a point now 
if you're going to stop worrying, how many are getting a good lesson in worry? When you're going to say, you, it's all you, you're my father. Yeah. When are you going to start saying that? Oh, you believe that theologically. And then he says, I'll pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods, and I will say to my soul, He'll say this, my soul. Soul? How many ever talk to yourself? <laughs> now watch this, circle the word soul. Is this, is this good? Okay. And now I'm going to give you spirituality 101. You're all now getting spiritual direction from Father Bill. No extra course. You're welcome. <laughs> I know you talk to yourself back there all the time. All right. Now, soul is, suke, ever say suke? Suke is your, in Hebrew it's, you've heard the word before. Now, this is the Greek, this is the Hebrew. You say soul. Now, watch this. This is so good. This is so good. I, I gotta say it slow so you get it. I gotta say it slow so I get it. You say to yourself, soul, what soul? You're thinking. And here's what you say to your thinking. Thinking? How are you thinking? Thinking? <laughs> and how do we know when you get older, you get kookier and kookier with your thoughts? Yes. Right? Did you notice people as they get older, they get nutsier and nutsier? Have you noticed that? Right? You have an older parent? How many know they, some of them become so irrational with what they're thinking? Mm. Mm. And you try to guide them. What are the policies of the hour? Oh no, no, we're not going to do that. And in my family we had that problem. Because they were talking to themselves. And they were afraid. And so what is the soul? Now, Isaiah 55 says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. That's why you worry. Can I tell you why you worry? You got stinking thinking. Now, if you ever worry again, and I forbid you all to worry ever again, how many think you can pass? Stop saying to yourself, this is what, what am I going to do? That's why you worry. Now, when my tire ripped the other day, I was like, oh no. I said, don't panic. And then there's one lady who said, oh, you better get it done, you better get it done, it'll blow up on you. <laughs> <laughs> and the only thing I saw was, I'm driving along, and there's this big air bubble coming out. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm driving along, and someone goes, next week. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm driving along, and the second person goes, do, do, do. <laughs> Warning. And I'm driving along, and the third person goes, <laughs> <It's cute. laughs> Amen. So, what did this woman do to me? Oh, you better get it done. Oh, yeah. And then the same woman says, you better take the blood pressure pills. 
Because I have a Filipino doctorette. And she's a nurse. And she says, if you don't take them, you could wake up in the morning with your tongue over your ear and your eyes closed. Now, how many know these images put some thoughts in your head? Yeah. So, why do you worry? I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Because you keep saying, what should I do? Now, you say to yourself, and I say, no, this is all, in, is this good stuff? Yes. I can't wait to hear the end of this myself. You say, your soul is your suitcase, your thoughts. And you're saying, you're saying, you know, you say to yourself, so, these are my thoughts. Here's what you say to yourself. Look what, look what Jesus says here. Is this good? You have ample goods. I have money in the bank. Hey, but then again, I don't. By the way, just for your FYI, the average person in America does not have enough money in the bank. The average person in America can only get out of a $1,000 crisis. That's all we have. That's the average person in America. Amen. Now watch this. He says to us there, I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Now, everybody circle that, one circle around it. This is the philosophy of the hour. This is the worst philosophy that has invaded your thinking. What do we call it? Let's be we. We call it party. The very first time I was on the Sea of Galilee, when I saw that boat coming, I thought Jesus was appearing to me at 7 a.m. And guess what happened? The light came brighter and brighter. I said, it's Jesus. He's coming to me on the Sea of Galilee. Oh, glory. And guess what happens? They were playing disco duck. <laughs> and I said, my whole mind is blown with the Sea of Galilee. And when, when I sit and build your bonfire, I'm going to show you the spot I heard disco duck coming across the Sea of Galilee. If I, the only thing I saw was the apostles going like this. <laughs> it, it just blew my religious mind. Amen? Amen? Are you getting this? Now, can you see, anybody can see yet why you worry? Anybody see yourself at least once? Nobody. Hmm, now, let's go on a little journey. You ready to go on a journey? So, how many of you talk now? Remember God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Now, this is the Greek, now the Hebrew is nefesh. And this is where you get nefesh. Now, watch this. In Genesis 2, verse 7, God breathes on man. Ho, anthropos. Did we hear that before? God takes the dirt from Middletown. And he looks at that and he goes. Dun, da, da, dun, 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 da, da, dun, dun. And it becomes in his image and his likeness. He says, Ho, anthropos. Now he says, oh, Adam, boss. Are you seeing anything different? Because the first time, Genesis 2 7, he got the breath. Now, are you ready for this? Oh, this is, are you getting good stuff? In John's Gospel, on the resurrection account, Jesus doesn't use doors or windows. Because when you go to glory, how many know you're not going to ever walk through a door? When you come visit me, you just go, whoop, right through the whoop, whoop, oh, hello, hello, how are you, whoop. You'll just be popping in. Are you getting this? There's stuff because there's no limitations to your new body. So you just walk through it. 
So when Jesus walked through, what does he do to the upper room? Ho anthropos. But he doesn't say ho anthropos. He says anthropoi. Men. You are breathing now with the power of the Holy Spirit of God. You've got resurrection grace in you. Okay? Now no, watch this. This is good. Can you understand why you worry? Now, hold your spot with me. I want to do some travel. By the way, this is the first time I ever gave this teaching, ever. You're doing a good job. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now travel with me to Psalm 103. Where? Psalm 103. How many here so far, besides me, can see how stupid it is to worry. Anybody see again? Nobody can speak? Now, Psalm 103, everybody go to verse 2. What did Mary say in her Magnificat? My <clears throat> now, when you worry, nobody here, you, ne you do not magnify God. Every time you worry, you put yourself in pagan formation. And guess who wants to copy you like that? Amen? Amen? How many here are getting a little conviction of the Holy Spirit? I didn't say condemnation, conviction. Everything will work out together for the good for those who love God. Do you love God? Romans 8, 28? Now watch this. Are you with me? Now watch this. Someone say this is really good. This is so good, Father. All right, now. I never gave this teaching before. I think i got to give it again. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. So, do you see a far cry different from that other man, that whole anthropos? That whole anthropos was a man that's not redeemed. You are men and women redeemed by Jesus Christ. You are the anthropoi. That's the plural for men and women. You are redeemed sons and daughters. Now, so what am I going to say? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. I, I know, I, I did see the Please buy it before you leave. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Let all that is within me bless His holy name. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you getting this? So what am I going to say? And that was saying, his soul, thinking, 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 barns and bigger barns and bigger, bigger barns and bigger, bigger. So what do I want? I've been rich and I've been poor and I've like rich a whole lot more, 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 bigger, 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 bigger. And you know what Jesus says? Smaller, 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 smaller. But I want bigger, 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 bigger. Amen? Do you see something's wrong? The bigger you become, the more worries you have. Amen? Amen. Now, let's go through this. Psalm 103. Now, how many here says you'll never worry again? I said that. All right, I heard it. It's recorded. <laughs> Amen? No, I just good sir. Are you getting this, ma'am? She's shaking her head. Yes. Bless the Lord, O oh my. What's the word? Now, there's a difference in Hebrew. In the New Testament, we are spirit, soul, and body. In Hebrew, you are spirit and flesh. What does this encompass? 
Bless the Lord, O oh my house. Nefesh, what is a sad? All of me. You see the difference in Hebrew? When you put the nefesh in there, that's a little different than the, than the, than the what's the Greek? Thinking, 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 thinking. Danger, danger, danger. Now, what's the Hebrew? Oh, man. Now watch this, good stuff. Here's what, here's what it says. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Now, I'm giving you a concert. You think, ling, ling, he said. Now, when you bless the Lord, it's everything. Now watch this. In Hebrew, when you bless, when you bless in Hebrew, it's all, everything in you. Amen? When you bless in Hebrew, it includes your thoughts. Amen? So what was the Blessed Virgin Mary say? All that. So that's why the Blessed Virgin Mary says, in the Magnificat of Luke chapter 1, verse 46, 47, she says, my soul, my spirit, everything. Now, do you think Mary had a worry? One thing, anybody here believe in Jesus? If you are a believer in Jesus and living your life in righteousness, which I'm sure all of you are, you are guaranteed you're going to eat every day. And some of you look like you can cool that a little bit too. No. <laughs> you're going to eat every single day. You're going to have a roof over your heads. Amen. A chicken in your pot. Amen. You remember Roosevelt? Teddy Roosevelt? Okay. You're going to, everything's going to be taken care of. Amen. He didn't say, filet mignon. He said everything will be set up. So we Filipinos always say set up, delicious. Delicious, set up. When you go to Jollibee's and you look at red sauces, right? you look at those things as a set up. I'll say, set up. And I'm ready to get on a boat to Corregidor in the Philippines. He says, now watch this. Everybody box in one down through five. Make sense to you? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And forget not all of his what? Benefits. All right, what happens when you worry? You forgot what he did to you yesterday. How many here had one good day in the Lord in your whole life? One good day, really great day. But you forgot about it. You become Elijah. You think a, 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 a mad woman with a broomstick is after you called Jezebel. <laughs> who forgives your iniquity, there's the abon, and who heals all your diseases. Hello? Can I tell you why you get sick a lot? Besides, because you're nuts. <laughs> because... Your suki is out of whack, baby. <laughs> amen? Now, can I make a statement? I'm writing a book. This should be written down in a book, amen? Yeah. Your suki is your, your, your getting into your psyche. Yeah. You're, you're, you're nuts, you're cookie. <laughs> amen? Uh, here's what I wish we could have. I wish you could put a little thing in your brain and hear what you think about all day long. Mm. And take it out, like... It's a bit really dark crazy. now. <laughs> Everything comes about healing. He takes care of all your healings. Next he says there, bless the Lord, who forgives all your iniquity, who underlines, who reveals all your diseases. Oh, this is really good. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit sitting on my shoulder right now. There is once or twice in the Gospel of Luke. I told you there's little tiny passages about this big, they're called vignettes. You know what a vignette is? It says Jesus healed everybody. I've never been to a mass, I've never been to a healing service where everybody's healed. I was out in Nebraska and I was doing a healing service and people were being healed all over the place. The ears were opening and everything else. And I got a whole list of 25 people that received healing. But not everybody was healed. No. And can I tell you why everybody's healed? Because when Jesus healed all those people, they were ready. This is really kind of hard to believe. 
they were tuned in to him. How many would like to have everybody in a church service tuned into Jesus, at least for once, at the same time? Now, when the Jews finally come around to finding Jesus Christ, you know what's going to happen? They're going to have to say, you're the Lord. Leviticus 26.40, when they do, they're all gonna, they all have to be in agreement. When they're in agreement, he's going to appear to them. How many like Jesus coming to Israel right now? Here's what we're going to do on the Sea of Galilee in the bonfire. And everyone's going to be walking around with candles. We're going to be holding our hands on the Sea of Galilee. Did you sign up yet? We're going to be holding our hands on the Sea of Galilee and we're going to proclaim with our heart, Jesus is Lord. Right over the Sea of Galilee. Uh, are you excited about this, man? Come. Come. Amen. Right over the Sea of Galilee. And then I'm going to, then I'm going to point out a few things to you. Now, what, what else happens? Who redeems your life from the pit. Now, every second word pit. How many are learning a lot of new things right now? Now, there are different levels of going to hell. How many ever said life is the pits? You don't want to say that anymore. When you understand what I'm just going to say to you right now. The pit is the lowest spot of hell. That's what you say. You know, life is the lowest spot of hell. Where's the devil going? He's going into the pit. So right there, if you circle the word pit, this is the lowest part of hell. What does he do? He saves your life from going into the the pit. Amen? Mm -hmm. Then he says there, who crowns you with mercy and compassion. Okay? Now, how many, how many need a crown? Now, in, in biblical days, the crown was what? Flowers. But now, you're going to be crowned with mercy and compassion. When we read a passage like Mark chapter 6, Jesus is always showing compassion. That means he's going to suffer with you. That means when he sees you really down and you feel like crying. You're, you're crying then, man. God saw you crying. God saw you crying the other day. And he wants you to know he loves you very much. And when you were crying, he wrapped his wrapping his arms around you. That's what he was doing. He was just hugging you. Yes, ma'am. When I first read this, probably a hundred years ago. Years ago. I wrote in the point of trust. Yes. Is that what was yes. that Did I pick up the right thing? Yes, absolutely. Okay, next he says there, who satisfies you with good as long as you live. Did you hear me? Now, watch this. Is this getting deeper? Is this really good? Now, how do you say good in Hebrew? Tov. Tov. Everybody say tov. 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 Now, when God made you, nobody hears an accident. He looked at you and he said, Tov. No? He said, Mea Tov. That means very good. When he made you, Miss Peggy, he said, Very good. When he made my David, Very good. And you know what he did? He did the happy dance. <laughs> Metov. So guess what happens? Now, now, are you getting with you like the Hebrew? When he gets this, he says there, who satisfies you as good as long as you live. Now, now, now watch this, watch this, this is so good. How do you sleep? Like, right back. Okay, now. <laughs> He'll renew your youth as on eagle's wings. Now that that's that's also connected to Isaiah 43. In Isaiah 43, it says at the end of Isaiah 43, sometimes you feel old. Anybody ever feel old here? Yes. But you're not called to be old. You're called to be renewed in the spirit. As on eagle's wings. What does it mean, eagle's wings? It means you don't flap. Can I tell you why you worry? You flap a lot. Yeah. <coughs> How's it going? How's life? I'm hanging in there, I'm flapping. <laughs> when are you going to start flapping? When are you going to soar? Amen? 
How many like now not to worry? How many can see all the fringe benefits? Good stuff? All right, back with me to, to Luke. It's really good, isn't it? Yes. I thought I'd be done with Luke today, but... <laughs> now, back, back with me, please, to chapter 12, verse 25. Eat, drink, and be merry is the world's philosophy. So, say, say, anybody go to interesting people at parties? I told you your typical party. The guys are over here, the Bud Light. Yeah, go, man. Yeah, man. Oh, the Yankees, what do you think, man? The uh, gins, the gins. You gotta go to the gins, you know, man? Yeah, yeah. You know, primo sausage. Yeah, man, you know, just. You know. <laughs> and then the girls are over here. The girls are in the kitchen going, yip, 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 and the girls go, Dinner! Alright, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Don't be afraid. Okay. <laughs> Eat, drink, and be merry. That's a philosophy against what happens when you keep eating. A blow up. <laughs> what happens when you keep drinking? What happens when you keep eating and drinking? And what happens when you try to be happy all the time? Scooby dooby dooby dooby. Then we do eat, drink, and be merry. Then you gotta go to bed. And then you wake up tomorrow morning and you go, oh, 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 oh. Amen? That philosophy is against the gospel. Amen? So circle that. Then he says to us, look at verse 26. Now here's what God says. Is that 26? No, uh, verse 20. God said to him, fool! I told you, I told you that God said Moros! Moros. Moron. <laughs> Amen. You moros. But don't get nervous. This is only a parable Jesus is telling. <laughs> you moros. There's only one other time Jesus calls somebody a moros. Do you remember where it is, Matthew 5? When you call your brother a name. How many ever named called somebody? Nobody. When you call somebody a name, you are moros. When you try to be a Barnes and bigger Barnes and try to figure out your life, you're a moron. Now, by Jesus calling a moron, guess what happens here? Are you getting it? This is it. By Jesus calling him Morris. It means you are not being wise with your life. You don't have wisdom. And here's what it means. Can I break it down more for us? When you don't have wisdom, these words are yours. You can't come to me. So you hear this in your house. I believe in God my own way. I say my prayers to the guy upstairs. Remember the guy upstairs? We call him Gus. Mm -hmm. Guy upstairs. <laughs> so how many people do you know pray to Gus? Amen? The guy up, amen? How many know there's a lot of Gusites out there? And in these days, with all this craziness in the church, more gussites are coming mm -hmm. up. You're going to see them crawling out of the woodwork, these gussites. Yeah. Yeah. So, who is the moron? The moron is those who try to supply for themselves. And number two, those who call 
others' names. Okay, anybody worry yet? Let's go on. Good stuff. God said, fool this night your soul, oh, oh soul, oh, oh soul, oh, oh soul. What did we just say? Guess what happens? We were just talking to it. How many ever talk to yourself? Did you ever talk to yourself now? Do you know it's recorded? Every time you talk to yourself. Oh, where's that color? It didn't work out. <laughs> oh, I gotta wait until I get back from Israel because I'm afraid somebody's gonna. Oh, I lost Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, and Deuteronomy. I ripped off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, amen. So now he says, you say to your because you've been talking to it now. Now watch this. this is really good. Turn to person because this is really good. <laughs> that which you worry about you get to talk to it again. Anybody want to worry some more? No. Does it, the problem go away? No. You think? You think? No. It what? Comes back. How many like this parable? <laughs> Then he says to us, so he can, though, now, can you see what Jesus says here? This night, now what does night time mean? Your day's over. You did all this during the day. Now Jesus gives us a little warning. Look at John chapter 9. Go to John chapter 9, please. Who wrote John? John. No, you aren't. Okay, is this good? Are you fine? What does it say, verse 1, 2, 3? By the way, when you go to Israel with me, I'm going to take you there. And by the way, uh, there's pools there. I'm dunking your wallet. You're not coming out until you repent. Okay, what else does it say there? As, as he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? But Jesus responded. Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible for them. Go ahead. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. While it is still day. Night is coming. Night is coming. When no one can work. You got it? It's over. Do you understand now what Jesus is saying there? Everybody see that cross reference? That's a powerful cross reference, isn't it? Oh my heavens, is that a good one? Oh my heavens, is that a good one? Did you get that, ma'am? Mm -hmm. Do you got John in your Bible, ma'am? I did. Oh, that's really great. I'm very happy. I still have it. All right, thank you, Jesus. Okay, now, back with me to Luke uh, 12. This night your soul, because you've been doing what? Talking to it. This night your soul is required of you. Whoa! Did you ever talk to yourself, ma'am? If you don't follow Jesus, guess what you're going to be talking to in eternity? Your soul. How many, how many want to talk to yourself? Let's play you back. Remember when you were in Port Marmot? Let's go. There you are. It's all how you doing. Oh, what am I going to do? I'm so weird. I ate my fingernails so much. They're gone from my fingers. I ate them all. <laughs> Hit my fingers and nails off. And you know what? Especially if you're a woman, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a bad problem. Because you painted them so many times that you're gonna eat the paint off them and the paint's gonna go inside you. You're gonna have lead poisoning from every time you're trying to paint your toes and everything else. Because once you're done with your fingers, you work on your toes. <laughs> Amen. Are you getting this? Now watch what Jesus says there. And the things soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? You see, who's everything that you have, who's getting it? My brother calls me up every day. He tells me how rotten the world is. He now tells me how rotten the church is. I hear this every single day. And as I was talking to him, uh, the jets are flying into Newark International Liberty Airport. I'm saying, I need to get on one of those right now. And uh, he keeps, now his new kick is, you need to make a will. 
Who's going to get it? I won't be around. Well, Aretha Franklin doesn't have $80 million to give away now. R-E-S-P-C-T. Okay, right? Amen? How many, how many could tell Aretha right now if you'd like to help her out? Uh, amen? No. Are you getting this? Then he says there, so, underline the next verse there. Verse 21. Is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. If you work for yourself, you are damning your soul. Okay. Now, let's get into don't be anxious. How, how many like this lesson? And, and good stuff? Are you, are you following right now? For verse 22. We've got a few minutes left. And he said to, his, said to his disciples, now notice, look at verse 13, we're leaving the crowd, right? Now he says to his disciples, he says, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. Now, anxiety has within it two bad ingredients. Ingredient number one is God's not there when you need him. Ingredient number two, I've got to rely on my own resources. How many have ever seen that? Yeah. Now God has made me, and I didn't ask him to make me. How many know that? He put me here. He gave me the parents he gave me. I didn't ask for them. He gave me Union, New Jersey. I didn't ask to live there. I didn't ask for all these. He gave me two incredible brothers. I didn't ask for them. But this is how, this is my, it's not the luck of the Irish. This is how it happened. About your life, what you shall eat. Don't ever worry about what you're going to eat. Nor about your body, what you shall put on. So, when you're in the kingdom, God says, I will take care of your eating. I will take care of what you wear. I will take care of everything your body needs. Now, what's going to happen to your body? It's going into the grave. Unless he comes in the soon second coming. Amen? Now, so, for life is more than food, isn't it? Now, listen to what Jesus says in John 10.10. 10. I give you abundant life. Does everybody know what that means? It doesn't mean that damnable uh, prosperity gospel that's out there. And I'll tell you all the preachers that you might be watching on Sunday morning. Keep away from them. We won't mention any preachers here. I don't want to destroy anybody's reputation. But I'll tell you afterwards if you want to know who. You probably already know who by what I just said. So what happens then is I trust God. So how many see those two elements ever working in your life? Notice what God promises. Here's what abundant life means. John 10, 10. I will give you everything you need. So much so that you'll have extra to give to others. How many like that kind of life? Consider now, verse 24, the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. Now, everybody circle the word raven. How many ever heard of a raven? What did the raven do in the book of Kings? It fed Elijah. Now, one thing about ravens, they're big, ugly, black babies. You know, go, oh, oh, they can go at you and everything else. I want to smack them. <laughs> Not one of them says, as they're flying over Middletown. You know what? As they sit on top of the church watching you go in, even when you go to Redback for your little special. You know what they're saying? They don't sit there. Hey, Mr. Ray, yeah? I think there's a worm shortage this year. <laughs> what are we gonna do? There's not enough worms down there. Maybe one of them down there in Middletown will leave me some potato chips. 
Or maybe we better hit Sandy Hook. And maybe somebody will stick up their french fries. And we'll, we'll go along with the, uh, we'll swoop in and take some french fries out of their hands. Usually on the beach you never see ravens, do you? Seagulls. You see seagulls. But the ravens know their territory. Now circle here the word raven because they take care of, they're taken care of. Now, good stuff. Now Jesus uses that which is in nature. He says, they have neither storehouse nor barn, yet God feeds them. Of how much more valuable are you than the bird? Does everybody here believe you're more important than a bird? This one lady spent hundreds of dollars on a dog. <laughs> Do you know that dog gets better medicine than most human beings I know? <laughs> and she gets her hair due every, 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 whatever. And she throws up on the floor. I mean, how many would I want to keep a dog like that? <laughs> and then the other one sits a, on a pillow and, and everything else. And by the way, the dogs tell you when they want to go to bed. Some of them will tell you it's time for you to go to bed. <laughs> and then you have a storehouse. Now, underline the storehouse. Now, the storehouse means for you as a believer, what God has in store for you in the storehouse. It's good and bad. Now, well, here's the meaning of storehouse. This is really good. Are you going to do something? The storehouse means what God has in store for you. Excuse the expression I'm using in store. What God wants to give you how to live. You see the storehouse? Now remember what Jesus says at the end of Matthew 7. The storehouse of the good and the old, the wise, the wisdom from above. That's what we get. When you don't worry, you got the storehouse. Amen? Well, she is a good Bible Tuesday. How much more valuable are you? Do you realize it now? Why do we worry? You don't recognize your value. So I'm going to send Edgar Allan Poe, the ravens, to go outside your window and go, 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 go. Oh, shut up. <laughs> hey, man, are you seeing this? And one thing I can't stand, I don't know why the Lord made them, those Canadian geese. <laughs> <laughs> and they, you go near them, they go, shh. <laughs> I said, look, you're going to be dinner if you do that one more time, baby. Amen. Amen. How much of you by, uh, by uh, verse 25, and which of you by being anxious can add a cubic to his lifespan? And let me show you something. Turn to verse 26. Are you learning a lot? Yes. Everybody take your hand like this. Take four fingers. And from the, from the crease, go all the way up to the last finger, you should get six times. Take it like this and fold it one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Yep. Everybody see that? Did you all do that? Oh, you're going to try it. Everybody take the crease right there. Take four fingers. Put them all together and then start rolling them. By the way, it's going to have far because you can't roll your hand around. So put a little marker there and start the other roll. All right. You should have six. Yeah. Ever see that? Yeah, you all have six? If you don't have six, you're, you're not normal and you better go to the doctor. <laughs> That's a cupid. Yeah. So if you want to measure a cupid, if you want to, here's a cupid. That's a cupid. So when God says to measure, can you add a cupid? You're the only ones on your block that know that, all right? And by the way, you'll forget everything else I told you tonight, but you will never forget what a cupid is. Tell me like a cupid now. Not Cupid, Q U P C U B I D. You know the little guy with the boom boom and the arrows. This is a Cupid. Cupid. So Jesus says, you can't grow this much. 
Okay? So if you want to know what a coup pit is, by the way, you'll never forget this, amen? You just take this. I didn't make it. So what did they do? They didn't have rulers. So what did they do? Now, when you read the Bible, say the book of Genesis, building the ark, and they tell you all the Cupids. So, how to know it? Uh -huh. mm. Okay, you, you got you got it. You got how the Cupid was formed. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm giving good stuff. <laughs> Did everybody have six? Yes. Some people said you have four and a half, you're abnormal. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're about that. And uh, how much of by you, by Agnes can add a cupid to a span? If then you are not able to do as much as that at a cupid, why are you anxious about the rest? God says to measure cupids, but you can grow in the measurement that God gives you. This is good. Now Jesus proposes questions to us, and every time he proposes questions to us, it's to ask us to think about that. Consider verse 27, the lilies, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. But I tell you, Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. Now Solomon was mega rich. He built the greatest splendor that the world has ever seen. And you and I can't just imagine what it is. It's called the temple, the first temple. The splendor of the first temple was never matched, ever. But of course, the second temple was built, but it didn't match the first temple. Because right now, everyone here redeemed by Christ, you match greater than the first temple. Everyone here is in faith and grace in Jesus. You, you match way beyond that. Amen? Are you getting this? Then he says to us there, the Lord does. By verse, verse number 28, but if God so close the grass, now circle the word grass. Now you're, you're going to get his glory, amen? You're going to get his glory, so now grass, now watch this. This is really grass, I don't mean this. I mean, um, when you have grass, it means wisdom. Because what does grass do? It grows, it's quick, and it's gone. So grace is a sign of wisdom that you got how to really live these days. Amen? Then he says to us there, of verse number 28, If God so close the grass which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will you be clothed? Oh, men of little faith. Every time Jesus corrects you because you doubt, because you're fearful, because you worry, our blessed Lord calls you people of little faith. He calls you microns. Little, little faith. So how does Jesus correct you? It's time for you to get some faith, baby. Amen. Peace, peace. Then he says to us, then he says there, is this good? And in verse 29, and do not seek what you're about to eat. But what am I going to have tomorrow? This is wisdom. What are you to drink? Does this sound like that philosophy? What's the philosophy of the other day? Eat and drink. Amen. Eating and drinking. Next he says there, um, nor be anxious mind. Hello. Talk to yourself. Suke nefesh. You morals. And what happens to all of us? It gets you crazy in your mind. Now, turn to person this is really good. Your renewal in Christ depends on one major thing. It's whether you get your mind renewed. And if you continue on your path, you're going to get kookier and kookier. <laughs> Let me give you a Bible verse. Ephesians 4, 17. 
You've got to be renewed in your mind. Amen? And then he says to us, and we're done, for all the nations of the world seek these things. How come we're going nuts? What's our main problem in the world? We're seeking what we need, and if I don't have what we need, I'll cross your borders and attack you. Back in the Old Testament, Exodus 21, they were forbidden to do this. I have a fence. You live there, I live here. But what would they do at night? They would take the fence and move it this way so they can take it some more. Now, if you really love your neighbor as yourself, you will help plant their seed on their side. Anybody want to quit being a Christian now? Then he says to us, For all the nations of the world seek these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom. Now, in Matthew 6.33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and everything will be given inside. Notice here, Jesus seek the kingdom. Now watch this. We're done. Which kingdom is it talking about? Now, everybody here is a Christian, right? Out of the day? Guess what I've done 36 years in ministry? I've never asked for a cent. Never. And guess what? My mother, a happy member. I'm 18. Mom, I'm going to be a priest. She says, good for you. Mom, I'm, I'm going to see the whole university. I hope you get in. <laughs> um, Mom, I'm only 18. I don't have a job. She says, well, pray. We'll come. Guess how much my mother gave me? Guess what happened when I left Seton Hall, Hall University? Guess how much I owed? Because I went to the kingdom. Amen? Anybody been blessed tonight? Amen? Are we done there? It says, seek his kingdom, and these things shall be yours as well. So in all my journey, guess what? My, my bills are all paid. Amen? I know I'm the envy of all of you. I don't have any bills. None. Well, that's because your life's up. Could be. Yeah, you could be right. Yeah, I, I'll give you that one. But everything's taken care of. Because I transferred from this kingdom with God is good to where he is with all the angels, saints, Mary, and all that. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom. Why do you worry? Because you're in the wrong kingdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You haven't advanced up. Sister, if they tell you you're in seat four, get there. <laughs> Everybody's going to arrive on time, but you'll, you'll ride back with it. How was your flight, Irma? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they had these little Spanish girls with little hats that went this way sideways. And Irma could have been looking at them with me. <laughs> no, not Irma. Amen. <laughs> 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 so, we were all on the plane. We all arrived. But some of us arrived like, how was your flight? I was squished in like a sardine can, and the guy next to me, he fell on me, and he was snoring all night long. 
And you know what I ate? Peanuts, peanuts, and more peanuts. I have a party. I have all the wine you could drink. <laughs> Irma, if you're offered four, take it! <laughs> take seat four. By the way, just when you fly, the single numbers are first class, okay? <laughs> Amen? Take it! Does John give you first class everywhere he goes? <laughs> All right. Take it! Amen? So, why do you worry? Why do you worry? You haven't gotten into the kingdom. You're staying in the little kingdom. What's going on? Amen? Don't get nervous. I don't get first class all the time. Sometimes I feel like a sardine can. And by the way, when you're in a sardine, how many know fish next to fish stinks? <laughs> Father, we ask your blessings upon us as we thank you for this word. Uh, teaching us uh, not to worry. And Lord, teach us how to really walk with you in the power of, uh, of the gospel. And Lord Jesus, just bless us and magnify your name in us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Good stuff. Good stuff.